Thompson with Jean Angel, and I'm with Dr. Ace here in Santa Barbara. We're in her beautiful office, and we're going to talk more about MTHFR and the patients that she's seen. So, um, thanks for being with us today. Who of your patients would you say are most susceptible to MTHFR mutations in terms of age or gender or demographic? Sure, great question. I mean, in my patient population, it's really about 90% of my patients. I actually get surprised when I wow. see a patient that doesn't have the MTHFR mutation. I don't know if it's, you know, the type of patient population that's coming to me looking a little bit more in depth about their health, not mm -hmm. getting the answers that they want. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I see it in four year old kids in 80 year old wow. men, you know, 25 year old women. It's really all over the map. The only thing that has some continuity is that if I see more than one family member, they're more mm -hmm. than likely to also have at least a portion of the mutation. Of course, mm. yeah, that makes sense. And would you say like, even for four-year-olds, are they already showing some symptoms? Yes, I mean, I typically get them if they are symptomatic. A lot of times mm. it has to do, you know, I'm seeing them when they have autism or they have mm. behavioral disorders or they have, you know, acne, eczema, um, you know, digestive issues. So the symptoms are all over the map and MTHFR is more than not a component of that because of how it affects their nutrient status, their detoxification as well. Yeah, the effects of it are so widespread. So other than acne and possible autism, what are some other symptoms or conditions that you commonly see with MTHFR? Sure, the symptom profile for someone that has MTHFR can be all over the map. Um, you know, I'm seeing people with depression. That's mm -hmm. a big one. Yeah. Um, any sort of behavioral or conduct disorder, I'm seeing a lot. Um, miscarriages, hmm. um, huge for women. Um, menstrual issues, you know, heavy PMS symptoms, um, fibroids, ovarian cysts, hmm. those types of things that relate to the processing and detoxification of estrogen. It's just, it's all over. There are a lot of misconceptions about folate, um, how do you recommend people better avoid folic acid, which is the synthetic form of folate in common foods and supplements? Sure. I mean, folic acid, the initiative to add it to foods was a, was a great idea in theory because, you know, we need the extra folate to help with neural development, especially in pregnant moms. But there was no concern as to the form that the nutrient was in. So now you're having folic acid in the synthetic form fortified in foods. And really the best way to avoid that is you know, avoiding your processed foods, avoiding your processed cereals, your oatmeals, your breads, all those types of things that take natural healthy grains, um, healthy, debatable, um, <laughs> but you know, fortify them with nutrients that are in toxic forms because it's actually been shown that increased folic acid in the blood correlates with increased risk of colon cancer. So it's mm. not a, a far-fetched theory. It's actually, hey, you know, that form of folate is, is not good for us. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you heard that, she's saying that vitamin D two that's commonly added is not necessarily the best type of vitamin D for mm -hmm. you, and folic acid. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's something you want to avoid. Really avoid those processed foods, especially if you're homozygous for MTHFR. So can you talk a little bit more? You mentioned miscarriages, the mm -hmm. risk of miscarriages, and and taking oral contraceptives, which are so popular today, mm -hmm. especially for young women. Yeah, I mean conventionally, any sort of you know hormonal issue there just told hey let's put you on birth control because yeah. the synthetic options are really yeah it happened to me <laughs> yeah it, it's so common and yeah. it's all that most women get presented with as options mm -hmm. I'm really not a fan for the primary reason that it's synthetic you know and synthetic hormones do not affect the body in the same way as our bioidentical mm. natural ones do. So, you know, when you have an MTHFR gene mutation and you're supplementing with synthetic hormones on top of that, it can be a, a less than ideal situation because your body has to detoxify those synthetic hormones. Mm. Um, and in the case of MTHFR mutations, detoxification is not working to its full capacity. So, yeah, um, yeah there are lots of issues that can stem from that. So really it's figuring out, do they have the gene mutation, supplementing them to help, you know, balance out the biochemical processes that are yeah. dependent upon yeah. the, yeah. you know, the mutations that are not working and, you know, bioidentical hormones working on nutrition, liver support to help balance out those hormones so that we don't always have to use synthetic hormones. So in the case of miscarriages, you know, it's so crucial to get women the vitamins in the form that their body needs. Yes. yes. And that, that can yeah. be life, life changing as well as supplementing with hormones that, you know, may not be adequate enough to support the, you know, baby coming to term.
Mm. And have you seen cases where a woman came in, say, with miscarriages and MTHFR, then was successfully treated mm -hmm. um, with Foley and then was able to come to term? With yeah, I do actually have a patient, and it's so exciting, two miscarriages, mm. you know, was at her wit's end, feeling shame, you know, her marriage wasn't doing so well because oh, it's a huge wow. stress. Yeah. And, you know, we identified she had homozygous recessive, so mm. she had the TT version of MTHFR. So, you know, significant decrease in the amount of, of folate that her body's activating. Mm. Um, and her progesterone was off, so there were multiple oh, things yeah. playing into it. But she's now oh, five months pregnant. Oh. Um, she's had the ultrasound. Everything's looking good. So good, it's, it's good. a really exciting situation for her and her family. That's really exciting. Um, so what other recommendations do you have for patients to safely detox, knowing that they'll have an increased toxic load due to um, MTHFR and impaired detoxification pathways. So detoxification is natural, it's normal, it happens all the time. With MTHFR, the primary thing that I'm looking at, the first thing is their glutathione. So glutathione mm -hmm. being the body's master antioxidant and crucial for detoxification, because of MTHFR mutation, usually the amount of glutathione that that person naturally makes is decreased. Um, so we're testing glutathione levels, seeing what they need, usually using intravenous delivery methods because they get to absorb 100% of the glutathione and it's really the most effective versus oral, you only absorb a small amount. Um, but it's really, you know, making sure that the things like glutathione that support mm, detoxification yes. are actually in high enough levels and then mm. looking at digestion, looking at elimination, looking at their ability to sweat, all the routes that the body detoxifies and really supporting those. So what other supplements do you recommend for people with MTHFR besides folate? Sure, so B12 is absolutely crucial, B, B9 being folate and B12 as well, and making sure that they're actually in the active forms mm -hmm. yes, um, yes. is key. Um, and then depending on what other you know, symptoms they present with, what other um, you know, genetic mutations they may have, using other methylation cofactors, so SAMe, inositol, you know, there's a whole, a whole list of them. If yeah. you only have MTHFR, that's one thing, but having one genetic mutation does predispose you to having more. So some Sometimes, you know, if patients are not getting, you know, symptom resolution and doing well with just supporting the MTHFR mutation, then we're looking deeper and seeing, hey, what else do we need to support your body with? Because there's always a reason. Yeah, there's always a reason. Yeah. And if you're with Dr. Alexander Ace, you're going to figure it out. Uh, she's in Santa Barbara. She is accepting new patients. And if you want to learn more about your genes, go to geneangel.com. Thank you. Thanks, Alexandra.